Jill, welcome back to the podcast. Listeners, it is Jill Dunn from Breaking Beauty, a member of the Hello. podcast. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for having me. It's been too long. It, do you know what makes me quite sad seeing your face? Is it the last time I properly saw you, it was in the flesh? Yeah, that was 20, that was 2018. Shush now. Yeah, it was. It's crazy because that was the last time I was in London and I want, I cannot wait to go back. I'm just like living off of my camera roll these days. Do you know what I mean? Like I just go back and I'm like, that's where I was a year ago at this time or two years ago. And it, that actually provides a lot of, a lot of joy. I'm like, maybe one day I'll get back there. But yeah, we were at that fancy hotel, whatever it was. The Mandrake. Uh, yes. And lots of the people watching there. Yeah, we had cocktails in the garden and it was very fun and it was a summer and it was just, it was lovely life before what it is now. But yeah, absolutely. We are going to tap into the feel good vibe that we had that night because you're going to share your feel good habits. Yes, I'm so excited too. And thank you for um, inviting me on your show. I mean, Carlene and I have said it since day one, your show is just like beauty with heart. And I just love that you're doing this series. And I'm sure it's just like, you know, everybody needs this right now. You know, even just simple reminders of what other people are doing. Sometimes I'm like, even like just being like, oh yeah, that's so simple, but that works. I'm really, I really vibe with that. I love it. Okay. So what is your first feel good habit, my friend? Okay. So my first feel good habit is walking and listening to podcasts. And that's probably no surprise (laughs) given that we are podcasters, but honestly, I've never been more grateful for summer weather. And I think just over the course of the last year and a half, I've been so much more grateful and appreciative of just the nature around me and just getting outside and breathing that fresh air. And honestly, in Toronto, where we had, I think it was like the longest lockdown in North America for a city. It was like significant um, time where nothing was open and you really couldn't go anywhere. And I lived by myself, so I couldn't really, uh, you know, hang out with pals. And just that daily walk, pounding the pavement, just cleared my head every single day. And it was also motivating because working for myself and working from home and podcasting and a lot of the work that we do were, I mean, speaking for myself, I sit on my ass a lot of the day. <laughs> so uh, this was, you know, having that something to look forward to, to listen while I'm walking. I sort of like made that rule for myself and, um, you know, saved my favorite shows and just go out, hit the pavement and I'll be like smiling before I know it. Um, so some of my faves are like Conan O'Brien needs a friend it's just like so silly and fun. And um, what are some other ones I listen to? Like sometimes some chat shows like NPR Fresh Air. Um, and then I got really nerdy and I started listening to stuff you should know. Uh, Have you ever listened to it? It's on my list. Okay. So this is just a whole series of, uh, you know, co- stuff. Whenever, whenever I go back to cocktail parties, I'll have a lot of fodder <laughs> to actually discuss like, there it's like everything from stuff you should know about chastity belts to the Titanic sinking. And it's just all stuff that it's kind of just nerdy topics, but nothing too uh, heavy or it's not like topical news. So it's uh, it feels a little bit more digestible and they have over a thousand episodes. You can kind of just like pick and choose what you want. Oh, that sounds like the perfect podcast for when you're, you, like you say, you're at a cocktail party and there's a lulling conversation. Yes. You're like, hey, did you know? <laughs> Literally. And and this is this happened to me over the course of the last few years where I'd be, I'd be starting a conversation and trying to not, not let on, I guess, or just, I was trying to avoid always saying, I heard on a podcast, I heard on a podcast, I heard on a podcast. <laughs> and now I find I do that with like TikTok as well. That's also uh, one of my habits is scrolling through there. But anyway, yeah, it's definitely, uh, that's been a saving grace for me. Now tell me a little bit about where you walk, because like you say, you're in Mm -hmm. Toronto. So I always just think of Canada as being unbelievably beautiful and just open and fresh. I don't know why. I just always think of it as being a really beautiful place. So do you have um, a preferred walking trail or hikes or anything that you do? Well, in the city, I think I would, I, there's a lot of like older 
neighborhoods with a lot of mature trees in Toronto. I would say that's a really, it's something that really sets Toronto apart. It's quite residential, even in the downtown area. So there's a couple of streets like Palmerston and Euclid where um, my apartment was. I actually, I'm away from there right now, but um, I just find like though, even though you're pounding the pavement, so to speak, and there's still like shops and people to look at, you're also surrounded by a lot of um, big, beautiful trees and nicely manicured lawns. And I, I love all of that. And then the, there are some um, hiking trails as well, like along rail paths and, and that. So that's good if you're like meeting up with a friend and you can kind of stroll and feel like you're not in the proper downtown. But uh, this summer I'm on Prince Edward Island, which is an island. It's the smallest province in Canada. It's where I grew up. And uh, it's just like so many gorgeous beaches and lots of beautiful trails, sand dunes, um, just gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous vistas everywhere you sort of turn. So I've been really inspired to be walking on the beach and yeah, just getting out there. Did you have a similar experience that I had? And because I did the same as you in the first lot and first couple of lockdowns and I went for long walks or in my hour a day when I was allowed out and I would listen to podcasts. But I was also very aware that I was uh, taking in the space around me a lot more. So whereas I would normally just kind of think, right, I'm going for a walk in the park. I suddenly noticed yeah. flower beds or actually there are so many different trees here. I just, I just was a lot more observant. Oh, absolutely. Like I started to have favorite trees on certain <laughs> streets and I'd be like walking by every day and like noticing if it was in bloom or if it was, you know, the colors were coming out. And I honestly did have that now that you say that out loud and um, you know, and there's a park really close to where I where I lived. So um, the cherry blossoms, that was like the cherry blossom watch was on. And I totally agree. I was just taking it all in a little bit more um, and just really trying to like breathe deeply when I was out, just relieving that stress and just shaking off the day. Mm. Oh, it sounds lovely. Okay. So that is a yeah. good first one. And I like <laughs> the fact that you've said some recommendations. So what is habit number two? Okay, my second one is limiting checks of hard news. And this is really difficult for me, because I was a former political science major. I really love current events, I kind of always prided myself on being on top of all of that stuff. But I just found in the whole uh, Trump era, and in COVID, I just, I just really got burnt out from the cycle um, my bandwidth for being outraged was really just done. Like I couldn't do it anymore. Every day there was something worthy of being outraged about. And um, at some point, it's just not good for you. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I removed all the hard news updates from my phone. And I would just check, you know, one time a day on BBC or New York Times, and just kind of, um, you know, skim the news once a day, because checking it every hour really it's not going to change anything. Yeah. And a part and parcel of that was also just limiting doom scrolling because I did have quite a bad habit of being on Twitter and just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and just seeing all those headlines that you never really click through to the articles, but they all just sort of weighed on you anyway. And, you know, I loved that. I can't remember the lady who, who uh, created that term doom scrolling, mm -hmm. But she would literally tweet that at night and say, are you doom scrolling? And I'd be like, oh my God, yes, I am. I am. So I just stopped doing that and um, re really limited those hard news check-ins because just kind of makes you feel helpless. And like I said, yeah, the bandwidth for, I just got burnt out. I can completely understand that. I think as well, I don't know about you, but it's finding that balance between not over-consuming so that yes. it affects you, but also still being engaged so that you do know what's going on. I, I think that is such a fine balance to try and find. It, it really is. And yeah, you don't want to have blinders on in the world. Um, but I think just spending so much time at home, it's so easy to just have CNN on in the background or, um, or be on your phone checking or, you know, everybody wants to send you updates in terms of like, apps or whatever that you have on your phone. And so it's just like setting that boundary around it, I found was extremely helpful. And I honestly did miss it for about a week, because I think I was hardwired mm -hmm. to be checking that all the time. But then it that subsided, and I feel like I don't, I've got a new rhythm going on. And it's a lot better. 
Do you have something that you consume uh, still online that's maybe the antithesis of that? So do you have any feel good things that you will lean into if you think I've doom scrolled, it's fine. I'm just going to throw my head into these cat videos or these memes or something. Oh yeah, that is that is a whole other feel good point. But yes, I call them content uppers, um, <laughs> which I didn't coin that term, but I heard it and I think it's great. So it's like TikTok, it's like, it's no wonder it's blown up because it's all just feel good stuff and kind of silly and silly dances. And oddly enough, like even cleaning hacks, like just make me feel so grounded somehow. Um, you know, and I love that TikTok has all these windows on these worlds that you're sort of automatically invested in like Alabama rush, like sorority rush week, like mm-hmm. uh, Bama rush TikTok, and that whole world that was like blowing up this week on TikTok, And I was thoroughly enjoying that. Oh God. I think I just literally follow Addison Ray. <laughs> I'm never really on TikTok very much. Um, so you might have to send me the links to that because actually Absolutely. What I, I don't, I I'm on TikTok, but I don't follow, I think I follow Addison Ray and Alex Light and a couple of other people. So when I go in and it says, um, for you, it always yeah. gives me really dark stuff. Like people having rows in supermarkets about not wearing masks. Oh, really? People having ben- uh, fender benders and things like that. And I just, I have to turn it off. Cause I think, why are you showing me the worst side of human character? Cause it is just basically That's- people rocking in the street. That's so bizarre. I've never, I actually haven't been served anything like that. And um, a friend of mine just told me the other day that if you have TikTok and you're on the same Wi-Fi as say like a friend who's also on TikTok, they'll start serving you. Like say your friend is looking at cat videos, they'll start serving you the cat videos because they know the algorithm knows that you guys have been on the same Wi-Fi network, which is totally terrifying, but a very easy way to turn around your algorithm. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that that's a bonkers thing. I just figured it's because I don't follow that many people. So it hasn't sussed out what I'm looking for. Right. So it's just, mm-hmm. and, and the reason why I think it shows me that is because we know that the apps know that if you're upset yeah. or outraged, you'll stay within the app longer. Right. Yeah. Which, yeah, you've got to, you've got to get out of there, get your head above that. And, uh, you know, find out Bravo content. There's tons on there. And then Tinks, she's she's the best, I think, on TikTok. Uh, Tink, she's a writer and content creator in LA. And she has this whole series that she does on TikTok called Rich Mom Culture. And she's just quite hilarious. Like, she'll really drill down on very specific neighborhoods, like in New York or LA, London, and what makes a rich mom a cool rich mom <laughs> from the bag that they wear to the sneakers they wear. And I feel like I've learned so much about all of these, you know, whether they live in Brentwood or in Chelsea or the Hamptons. So it's fascinating. Right. We need to get on the same Wi-Fi on TikTok. Yes, I just, exactly. I just want all your content. Um, <laughs> and you mentioned Bravo then, and I'm, and mm-hmm. I don't know if Bravo is going to be a feel good habit. Oh, I think it's, I think it has saved me during the pandemic, like praise be to Andy Cohen. Um, <laughs> it, it, I don't know, just escaping into those worlds that it is just so silly and fun, but you know, it, actually I binge watched, um, from the very beginning, the real housewives of Atlanta over the course of the last year, cause mm-hmm. I had never watched the Atlanta franchise. And that was, that was so eye opening to be honest, because so many pop culture phrases from Beyonce lyrics to, um, you know, just catchphrases that were part of the lexicon, but I actually did not even know that they came from Real Housewives of Atlanta, like twirl on them haters came from there. And um, there's so many more. I can't even think of them. Gone with the wind. Fabulous. Yeah. Gone with the wind. Fabulous. (laughs) I have Sheree. (laughs) I have Sheree saved in my videos. And every time someone sends me a message and, and they say, will you do this or whatever you, it just, I just reply with Sheree going hell to the nah, 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 nah. <laughs> she by Sheree might be coming back. I heard. So I'm pretty excited for that one. <laughs> I want she, she also said, Sheree. she also had, Oh, it's the other one. Oh yeah. Who won't check me boo. Oh, That's gonna the other iconic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. I love that you're also a Bravo fan. We've talked about this many, many times about how basically yeah. we just need to, I just want to be near, what I just want to see them filming I just want to see what it's like I don't know why yes I know and you know what like it is silly and fun but I also do love that 
it's an opportunity to, opportunity to see women over the age of 40 on television. Yeah. Like Andy, Andy Cohen did bring us that up before the housewives. You never saw that. Mm. And, you know, you, now you see Kyle Richards and Lisa Rinna and, you know, um, like Luann and Ramona, like they're, they're definitely looking better than ever. And oh. it's just, it's so, it's just fun to watch. I don't know. It is fun to watch. It's magnificent. Actually, our dream, because obviously we're both beauty yeah. editors at heart, is to be invited to a beauty launch for a housewives range, which I think we probably have separately, but we need to do, we need to be there together at some point in the future. I agree. Who do you <laughs> think still needs a beauty line that doesn't have one from the housewives? Luanne de la Seps. Mm. She, she does it? so good. I don't think she has one. Okay. She looks yeah, incredible. I don't think so. And yeah, she really does. And years and years ago, and I was trying, I was telling someone this the other day, and they were like, I don't believe you. And I don't, maybe I dreamed it, but I'm sure I didn't. Kathy Hilton came to London, I swear, about 15 years ago, and I went to her suite in Claridge's and she washed my hands in a in a <laughs> basically a a bowl, a crystal bowl, a cut beautiful crystal fruit bowl bowl. She washed my hands with an exfoliant and then massaged my hands. And as this was happening, Rick Hilton walked in in a dressing gown with sports socks and sliders on and got came and got the newspaper. And I'm sure she was launching some sort of obviously skincare line but I never heard anything about it after the fact but that definitely <laughs> happened my mind was just going I'm like wait was this a, a spa at the Hilton they were trying to promote I was uh, that is bizarre I mean it was amazing I'm now because I think she's yeah. fabulous but um oh I love her love her but who is hunky dory <laughs> <laughs> that's fabulous oh, I thought you were Kyle <laughs> we're going to lose so many people who aren't into housewives so let's yes, move on to exactly. your next habit <laughs> okay um I think something else that's in, incredibly important is just connecting with friends um in this time like I said I live by myself and I just found that that was the total lifeline for me especially in the last year and I feel like it has continued like um, you know, one of my best friends from college, she lives in the States and we just, we don't get a chance to see each other a lot, but it was really interesting. Pretty much as soon as the lockdown happened, it was like, we were like te texting all the time and zooming and just reconnecting. And it was just interesting. The people that, um, you sort of gravitated toward when, you know, shit was really starting to hit the fan. Yeah. And, and so, whereas like before I'd be like, Hey, checking in, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Like a little bit more, um, just on the fly kind of checking in, but we really, I think needed each other mm -hmm. to, um, to kind of get through that. And I, I think that's been really eye opening and just, you know, doubling down on those friendships that really matter has been important to me. And, you know, whether it's a giggle over, housewives episode or it's you know just talking through how you're feeling that day or you know helping them relieve some of their mom guilt <laughs> um it's it's been really really important um and and I think what's been also very interesting and I don't know if this is happening in your world but you know, some friendships have been strained during this time. I think a lot of people are trying to figure out if they're aligned on risk tolerance and how and, and in some ways a year ago was a little bit easier when we were all really in the same boat. And now I find trying to figure out who is aligned uh, in terms of like seeing each other or who's mm -hmm. still very timid or um, who's, you know, thinks the whole, the whole thing is all blown out of proportion. So that's been interesting and trying to navigate those friendships in this new era has been uh, interesting as well. I, I totally agree with you. And I think the other thing is that not having physical connection with your friends has yeah. definitely in my world, it's made me realize that because those physical energy isn't there. So if you get drawn into people who are quite energetic or sort of not suck all the air out of the room, but are quite dynamic, mm -hmm. you can miss the people who are a bit quieter. And I was at breakfast yeah. with, friend the other day, with a friend the other day and she said, it's like when you go to... Um, uh, a, an animal rescue to go and get an animal they always say they always say choose the animal that comes to you don't a lot of people sort of go to the quiet one because they think oh it needs 
it needs coaxing but apparently it's the opposite in social situations you shouldn't go for the people that you're immediately drawn to you should look well actually who's standing at the back of the room or who's a bit quieter then they're, they're probably my people and I have definitely noticed in having online communications with people my friendships with the people who maybe I didn't see the most in person are now stronger than the ones I used to see in person all the time yeah and it's just um yeah it's and it, it's really interesting too because like some people I want to see in person but they're maybe not ready to do that and yeah, yeah so you're just it is just constantly you know, that fine balance. Um, how are you feeling? And, are you kind of, are you tentative still about going out or are you? Um, not where I'm per- currently based in terms of geography, because, um, yeah, like I mentioned, I'm in Prince Edward Island and in the whole of COVID, they've only had 200 cases since March of 2020 and zero, I think maybe one hospitalization and zero deaths. So they've managed it very well because they have borders that mm-hmm. they can um, manage and, you know, people quarantine when they travel and all of that. So here I feel fine about it. I see everybody. In fact, I was at a party the other day and we were actually like passing around um, uh, and taking sips of this one drink. And and afterwards I was like, was that smart? Or like <laughs> sometimes the guard is down a little bit too much, I think. Yikes. <laughs> um, so you have to be careful on that. So basically everybody that lives here and has lived here for the entirety of COVID, I don't really, it's, they've lived in quite a cocoon, a, quite a bubble. Mm-hmm. So whereas I was in Toronto, downtown, biggest city in all of Canada. And I definitely had moments where I was afraid to go outside. Yeah. Um, and so here it's like the guard is down, but I'm trying to just be smart about it. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. But I'm, du- you know, I'm double vaxxed and um, most people I know are, but there are a few in people in my life that are not and trying to respect that and um, trying to give them the space to figure out what they need to do as well. Because I just feel like shaming people. And I see a lot of shaming and things like that going on right now online. And while I understand that it's probably coming from a good place, I don't think it's where it's not going to reach the intended audience, right? It's, it's not helpful. What we need, no, we need like some, we need understanding and try to help these people feel more comfortable. Um, you know, so it's, uh, it's a whole new era. It's that, it's that outrage again, Jill. It's getting people, mm-hmm. keeping people online being outraged. So let's move away from that. Mm-hmm. And where are we next? <laughs> What's your next habit? Okay. Um, so I just wanted to share some productivity hacks that I've been using that make me feel good because they make me feel like I'm sort of managing my day well. And they're so um, small, but I feel like they all add up to making me feel like I'm kind of crushing my day. So um, very simple, but turning off all of my notifications, the do not disturb mode is my friend when I'm working, podcasting for sure. We want no interruptions. Mm -hmm. And I also turn that off at night too, um, because you never know, like DMs can blow up at any hour of the day. Um, Something else I do is I put time limits on all, pretty much all of the apps on my phone. So Instagram, uh, as well as Linear, like games, like crossword puzzles that I can get sucked into or um, in Instagram and Facebook as well. So, and once I hit those time limits, which is, I, I set it to an hour a day. Most days I don't hit that. Um, but if I do, I just like, I'm like, okay, yeah, that really crept up on me. That's a whole hour I've spent scrolling and doing nothing. So <laughs> let's like put that away. Yeah. Um, and something else that I've been doing, and this kind of applies specifically to the line of work that we do, but uh, I just have a lot of zoom fatigue right now in terms of events and desk sides. And I'm trying to set up a lot more boundaries around that. So I will ask the PR to record the presentation and send it to me later. um, So I can view it at my leisure. And um, that's been helpful too, just because you know, in the, in the middle of a work day, like an hour to hear about a new lipstick while it's great. It's just not necessarily a great use of time. Yeah. And also do you have the same bugbear I have? And I know lots of my fellow beauty pals do is that you say, yes, I will accept this invitation and I will join your zoom call at 2 PM. And then Mm -hmm. for 15 minutes, they're waiting for more people to join. Yeah. No, I really, I no, no, definitely. I haven't uh, asked anyone to send a recording, but actually that's a genius idea. 
Yeah, that's um, that's been a helpful a helpful hack. And then um, something else that I do that's very nerdy, and I I learned it from the home edit people, the two women that run the home edit, and I've actually convinced a lot of other people to do it. So I thought I'd share it here is the apps um, on my home screen for my iPhone is I organize them by color. Have you ever heard of this? No. So instead of having like pages and pages and pages that I scroll through, essentially, I just group the apps by color and I create the folders. Um, So there's red one, a purple one, green, yellow. And it's kind of shocking how your brain will remember that the Amazon one is yellow. My bank is red. and, And then it just makes me feel that I have this part of my life more under control because oh, and it looks it's nice just, too. it's just one page on the front of my iPhone and you can kind of access everything that you need. And it definitely um, feels less overwhelming. I present my, my color coded bookcase, which my listeners. <laughs> oh <remember>. yeah. <laughs> it's like your home screen. <laughs> well, exactly. I love that. I heard a hack was to every month basically rearrange your app so that they, there's okay. less muscle memory. So that yes. when you, you know how when they changed on Instagram where you went, the heart was at the bottom and now it's at the top. You know how people yeah. freaked out about that? Yeah. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Well, I just, I was just on holiday for a couple of weeks. And so I deleted Slack from my phone and I deleted my email from my phone. And I did that when I reinstalled them, I put them in different places because it's just, yeah, muscle memory, habit, it's looking all the time. And it's it's like, wow, this control this phone controls me when I realize <laughs> that my thumb just wants to hit this one spot. So I agree that that is a great hack. So I, I love that. Yeah. And you know, I just feel like I'm the type of person I'm I'm I am guilty of multitasking a lot. So that's also been another productivity hack. And also, I guess a feel good habit too, where I'm trying to just focus on one thing at a time, rather than my brain having all these tabs open, so to speak, um, because ultimately, it is just way more productive. But it's for me, I am the type of person where I am I'm trying to do kind of all everything all yeah. at once. That's typically how I'm hardwired. So I'm finding when you literally just have one tab open figuratively and literally, um, it, it is a lot more productive and you feel like you get through something and then you're taking it off your to-do list. Right. And Mm -hmm. that in and of itself, like acknowledging those little small wins throughout the day, um, is very motivating too. So helpful. Um, do we have one more? Did I, did I add Bravo in as an extra bonus one? (laughs) That was, that was one of my feel, oh. my feel good hacks, but, um, oh, what was the other one I was going to say? Oh yeah. Um, you know, this is something I'm still working on, but maybe you can shed some light, um, to help me on this as well, because I've worked for myself for nine years. I've worked from home the entire time and I still feel like it's very difficult to end the work day especially when we were talking before we get on the call, just about working in different time zones and, and, you know, where you feel like you need to respond to somebody who's in LA who may be sending you something later. And I, I do feel like it's quite, yeah, difficult to have boundaries around that to shut my computer at five o'clock and be like, okay, that's it. You know, I have two things to offer you. MailChimp. No, not MailChimp. Yes. What is it? It, um, Mail Butler. Yes, a carpet rake or whatever equivalent is suitable for your office. So bear with yeah. me here. Uh, Mail Butler essentially allows you to schedule emails. It also allows you to put together a nice signature. It also mm. allows you to track your mail and see when it's been opened. <laughs> um, but <laughs> what it allows me to do, which is so handy, is it allows me to send an email at 11 o'clock at night when I think of it if I think of it and it's urgent and schedule it to hit the recipient's inbox at 9 a.m. the next morning. Because mm-hmm. I, I email people in the manner in which I would like to be emailed. So I send emails only between 9 and 6 p.m., 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Because I'm trying to respect in the world that is 24 hours, yeah. I try to respect people's boundaries. Um, and that has made such a difference because I can be cooking dinner. I can have been, I will have finished work, but I think ah, if I don't do it now, I'll forget. So I can open up the laptop, send the message, but send it the next day. 
So yeah. that's really helpful. And then the other thing I do, and I have a carpet rake for this, but I tidy my office. So as soon as I get to that headspace, I tidy everything down. I, all the papers that I've used in the day, I file them away or I throw them away or recycle them depending on what they need. I wipe down my desk and I set everything as I would want to find it in the morning. And that has been such a game changer. And then the carpet rake is because I then rake myself out of the office so that the carpet, <laughs> so that I know, because I hate footprints on the carpet. So I know that if I come back in, I'm going to have to okay. rake it again. <laughs> Okay, yes, these are all a very good suggestions. I do use something similar, a feature in Gmail for like, you know, sending it a little bit later. And I do also try to respect that. Like if I'm emailing people or I'm catching up on a Sunday or something, I schedule it for the next day because I just don't want to be having people get notifications on a Sunday that for an email that I'm sending them. But um, yeah, that's a really good, good tip for mail, mail Butler. I'll have to check into that. Yeah. But do you find that you just work seven days a week? Cause I I'm, I'm not perfect. I still fall into that trap. Like it's not even about the physical. Yeah. So I can rake myself out of the office, but it doesn't mean that my brain switches off. That's right. Yeah, no, I find it's, I just took two weeks holiday and even that I found it was quite difficult to not be thinking about something I might have to do in future or some episode we need to book for future guests. And um, yeah, I'm just constantly thinking about it, but that's the blessing and the curse of working for yourself. Yeah. Nine right? years though. It's, well done. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, but I will say this was the first year I ever bought a desk to work at home because <clears throat> primarily I used to have an office, a separate office space, which I don't have anymore because of COVID. And, um, I had shared that with a few friends and I also had a membership, um, at solo house in Toronto as well. And so I did a lot of work there, a lot of meetings. And so it's just, it was very strange to actually be in my apartment and like working there mm-hmm you know, staring at the same four walls for, you know, nine hours a day, I found that to be um, a huge adjustment because at least before I could go out to a coffee shop, I could go out, just break up the day, you know? So I, um, um, I've said to people that I think one of the reasons I'm the same as you live by myself, work from home. One of the reasons why mm-hmm. lockdown wasn't so much of a challenge is because pretty much every day I'm doing something like this. So at least I am connecting and having an interesting conversation with somebody, which is, you know, a blessing. Yeah, it's, uh, that, that has been, I would say a huge saving grace of doing the type of work that we're doing, because usually it's somebody you're excited to talk to somebody you'll learn something from, um, you have to put your hair and makeup on, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, where before my motivating factor for that was going to an event or yes. whatever. Um, but now, you know, I, I really do actually enjoy when I'm getting up and I'm like doing my full hair and makeup and I have lights and whatever and putting it all together. Um, because yeah, it just makes me feel like there's a world out there Yeah, or certainly in the, in the very thick of, uh, of COVID. So these have all been great. I have loved them. It's been so nice to chat to you and uh, just tell listeners you where too. they can find you and your fabulous okay. podcast. Okay. Well, our show is called Breaking Beauty Podcast and we talk to people about the breakthrough people products and moments and beauty. So we started off talking to founders primarily, but now our most popular episodes are the ones where we review basically what we think is what we call damn good and um, a lot of what's new in the market. So we try it. Um, We try it and then you guys can buy it or not. (laughs) And we also talk to a lot of great people like Caroline Hirons and. um, Oh my God. I wish she's going to smack me. (laughs) Um, you know, and who else, who else, Renee Rolo, lots of great, uh, skincare, hair care, makeup experts. Oh, she's wonderful. She's so generous with her time and, yeah. um, just so knowledgeable and just, I love her product line too. I've really gotten into that lately. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's our podcast. It drops every single Wednesday. And then myself personally, you can find me at Jill D on beauty on Instagram. And my goal for later this year is uh, to be posting on there a lot more and you can find us also on TikTok at breaking beauty podcast. We're trying to post a little bit more on there as well. Oh, I, okay. We're going to have to have the TikTok conversation offline. You yes. have to give me a lesson, but this has been so wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your habits. It's been a joy. Thank you. Hopefully we can 
see each other in person next time. Yes, please. <laughs>